generation and, and Bill Oddie type of people. <laughs> Bill Oddie type of person. Bill Oddie person. Bill Oddie come through the keyhole. I think it's fair to say you are a billoddy type of person, don't you? Uh, roughly. I'm not too sure these days. I think, I think, I must admit, seeing that and hearing what everybody said, um, it, and also watching the programme in general, it strikes me how much you ought to have couples on. Because the influence on that house, I would say, is perhaps more my wife's than my own. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> And yes, you can find people like that to live with. Yeah. And but, I mean, what about, take the Walt Disney influence. Whose was that? That's, that's Laura. Laura is my wife. And yes, she does work in the same business. So, Sarah, you were right as well, because uh, she's, in fact, a writer. And we write together. Sometimes we write separately. Um, that really comes from going, the whole concept of the house. <laughs> it's got a concept, yeah? yeah. Um, comes... It's not just a house. <laughs> stupid. It comes from Disney World. We went to Disney World several years ago and we liked the idea that they had all these stupid lands. You know, you have frontier land. You must have been yeah, there. Then frontier land and sea land and all that sort of thing. And so we just took every room and thought, well, let's give it some sort of silly thing. Lloyd thought that the sofa had an ethnic fabric. <laughs> Does it have ethnic fabric? Please yourself, yeah. It's from, <laughs> <laughs> from John Lewis, actually. It's quite cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they, the, concept, the, the concept of that fabric room, department. Yeah, of, of course. That, that one got a bit mixed up because that was meant to be down one end was meant to be the kid Creole room, and you remember him, famous mm -hmm. kid Creole. So that was meant to have a sort of uh, um, Caribbean feel to it. And the other end, he's quite right. He's sort of bits and pieces which I've collected from travelling around the world, which I've been lucky enough to do in the past few years in pursuit of birds and other wildlife. Mm. How do you redecorate? I mean, we don't. We're not going to have mice this year. We're going to do. No, we don't. Well, the key to the house, actually, it was interesting that Willie said, who dusts it? It isn't clean that often. No disrespect, disrespect to the cleaner who occasionally comes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it isn't clean. And the whole concept is that you really don't have to clean it. If you have a house that's that cluttered, I mean, I must admit, most of the houses I see on this make me feel so dirty, you know, because they, <laughs> they look so clean. And ours is, it really is a mess. You don't have to clean a house like that. And anything that we buy, like the Hoover, for example, which was apparently a great embarrassment, the Hoover was visible in Claire's house, look at the Hoover. And we, we just buy Hoovers that fit in. So we've got a yellow Hoover in, in a kitchen which has to have yellow, black or white. Well, I think, it, as uh, Sarah said, that the fun of it all and the colours and the... And listen, it's, maybe you want to change the colours, you can change the colours. Exactly. It's when you're not allowed on television very much, you put it all into your home, and that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a, as a souvenir, we'd love Bless you to you. take this. I don't, does it, it won't tone fit. with the kitchen? No, it didn't fit anywhere. Which room will it go We'll in? have to redo a room now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, I, I have an idea, actually. Well, thank <laughs> you for being with us, Bill. It's been enormous fun. Thank you very much. Very thank welcome. you to our panel. Thank you to young William Rushton, young Sarah Kennedy, young Alan Corrin. Our thanks to Claire Francis and, of course, to Bill Oddie. That's all for now. Until the next time, goodbye for now. Click if you can still hear us. Mecha Bingo Online, sponsors of Challenge. You have a choice between saving one person and saving every world. I'ma do my own thing. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, available now in Sky Store. Sky Arts brings you an unmissable celebration of the incredible David Hockney. When I'm in the studio, I feel 30. 
And Harry, Harry Potter. Travel back to the home of witchcraft and wizardry. I want to be a wizard. Sky Cinema Wizarding World. Available now. You've made us wait long enough. What's your final answer? Mecha Bingo Online, sponsors of Challenge. Thank you very much indeed. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Through the Keyhole, the programme that shows you not just how the other half lives, but where they live as well. Tonight, as always, we're going to be borrowing the keys to two fascinating homes belonging to well-known people, and with Lloyd Grossman's help, we'll be taking a privileged peep behind closed doors. The question is, whose? Well, to try and answer that question, our luxuriously appointed panel is both ornate and practical. Firstly, a man who has discovered the secret of eternal youth. He lies about his age, Mr. Chris Tarrant. <laughs> and secondly, a woman who, thank goodness, never keeps her opinions to herself, Miss Anna Rayburn. <laughs> and finally, and finally, a man who hates to repeat gossip. But then, as he says himself, what else can you do with it? Born with a wonderful sense of rumour, Mr Nigel Dempster. <laughs> well, now, with the help of our magic keys, we're going to be taking a careful look again inside two fascinating homes. And that should tell us something, maybe quite a bit, about the person who lives there. All that our friends here have got to do is to uh, try and work out who that is. So let's join Lloyd right now at house number one. And watch closely, because remember, the clues are there as we go through the keyhole. This part of the countryside is so picturesque that even the birds live in thatched cottages. <laughs> The first room you come into is the dining room, so obviously eating and drinking and entertaining are a very important part of the life of this household. And look at this tremendous profusion of beams. A travelling woodworm would think he'd checked into the Savoy. They're also animal lovers and practical as well. Very cheap to feed. I don't think this house was built for very tall people. This is quite a cosy room. It's got a huge fireplace. It does look a bit, though, like a display for log effect fires. Someone who lives here is a bit of a collector. There's a fine collection of traditional English horse brasses here. <laughs> One of the most interesting objects in the room, though, is this Stradivarius with a built-in lamp. I think it was probably designed for a strolling violinist in dark nightclubs. There's a large group of Italian figurines here. And rather like the horse brasses, they're things that have to be kept clean and shiny to look their best. So someone in this house likes the sort of the simple pleasures of housework. Even though this room is quite dressy and formal, it's also very relaxed. People like to lounge here. Look at all those big, soft leather sofas, for example, which look as if they were ripped out of the back of a 1959 Pontiac. This bear appears to live pretty well. And I have a feeling that his owners are a bit like him, that they're sort of warm and cuddly people, because the bear's just part of a huge menagerie of soft toys. I just wonder if the owners look a bit like this. <laughs> I 
quite a splendid parade of military chests. It reminds me of a dressing room in an old soldier's home. Now, this is a very well-balanced household. It's very democratic, very egalitarian. The lady of the house has her own dressing table with lots of gunk and makeup on it, and the man of the house has his own dressing table with his supply of aftershaves. So it's a very well-balanced household. And one thing that appears to be obvious is that these people are incurably romantic. Well, this is an unexpected touch of Marbella in East Anglia. Let's look at the evidence. The thatched birdhouse, the electric Stradivarius, the ugly duckling. So what sort of person lives in a house like this? David, it's over to you. Thank you very much indeed, Lloyd. And now for our home and studio audience, though not for our panel. Here's whose house it is. Well, now, I think, Christopher, you should begin this analysis. Thanks. <laughs> very, that's very difficult, this one. I mean, it seems like a nice, twee little country retreat as opposed to a home. There's obviously a lot of, a few quid about There's There's a roller tucked away in the dry. There's the swimming pool. Quite a small pool, so it can't be... Bernard Manning or Cyril Smith. Um, <laughs> it's either somebody who's terribly, terribly rich and does nothing, like an estate agent or a gossip <laughs> columnist, or... <laughs> I, I don't know, there's family money or something. There were no signs of work, or it's just very much a country retreat, and it's not really their proper home, which means you're cheating a bit on us. I don't think we are. I think this is a real, their real living spot. They don't do a lot. Anna. All I know is that she uses a very well-known brand of cosmetics and he uses a very well-known aftershave. And they like cuddly toys, which rather suggests that they are young at heart, friendly, gentle people, or else they make a living out of working with children. Yes. <laughs> well, they, they don't make a living working well, out well. of children. That was as good a silence as you'll get. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least that's Nigel. the next line of questioning, yes? Well, Chris said it didn't show any apparent signs of anyone doing a stroke of work, so I think this is the new house of the Duke and Duchess of York. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm totally foxed. I'm, what sort I'm, of person do you think it is? Oh, definitely artistic. Whether it's cooking or painting or... Performing. Yeah. What? Um, performing. Performing of a... The first glimmer of hope for the yeah. panel. That wasn't a glimmer, that was encouragement. <laughs> Performing. Performing. Christopher. A comedian or something. <laughs> so it's very odd. I mean, you expect a comedian to live in a, a madhouse full of silly things all over the walls and joke books, but it's a very quiet sort of gaff. Um, oh, a, a stand-up comedian who lives in East Anglia. Does no. he work alone or with a prop? I think you basically when things have been working alone. That, that takes poor old Orville out of it, doesn't it? Yes, we yes. thought it might be Keith, Keith Harris and Orville, and we were hoping... Now, you've got a performer, you've got a comedian. A comedian who works alone. Are you going to get any closer? Ah. I don't think you are, are you? They're not going to get, will you come through the keyhole, Mr Mike Reed. No, no. Well, Mike, they didn't. They they got a comedian, but they just there weren't enough clues there for them somehow, were there? We were deprived of basic information about well, you. Well, they, they would have. Been... We saw a fireplace, a lampstand, a lot of cuddly toys. Yes. Where was the Frank Carson joke book? Where was well, that? You know. Chris <laughs> 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 slim volume. But you got you got you got incurably romantic. We told you, warm and cuddly. Absolutely warm. I mean, and it was a giveaway. He's too big, little low ceilings, little tiny pool. He'd never get. Well, keep that me biscuit. That that's why that's gone. Look. <laughs> <laughs> what was the electric Stradivarius? It's a, it was a lampstand I bought many, many, many years ago, David. It's a, it's a lovely. I, I like it anyway. It's a, it's it's made of uh, it's porcelain. Mm -hmm. When when did you actually with the comedian? But when did when did it really all start? I mean, it, well, at Butlins. That was the big break. Wasn't no, it? no, no. Uh, uh, I started with uh, with um, the Granola Television. That, that's what was my break with, with the comedians, which is now. Yeah, some, but that, before that, you'd you'd come second in a talent competition. Oh yeah, yeah. Butlins, don't you? 
It was, yeah, Buckman's, I did. It just, all it, actually, all that did for me, though, was to give me some sort of incentive to think that I, I had some sort of talent, because I was, I've been working, obviously, uh, for years and years and years uh, prior to that, um, all over the country. I mean, I was a professional comedian, and uh, Buckman's, uh, in all due respects, at the end of the day, they hold these competitions, and at the end of the day, the people that do get to the finals, every one of them is a pro. And now, there was one clue they missed there, too, which was the Ugly Duckling, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yes, you didn't see this. Big hit, duckling. right? 1975, big yeah, hit. Yeah, monstrous hit. Yes, yeah. it was. Huge, great. How big a hit? Oh, enormous. Thing. Enormous. Thing. Enormous. Thing. I think I had that door. Enormous thing it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was number, it got in the top ten, which was, for me, it was odd. I tell you what, I mean, a lot of people would not expect you to live in the countryside like that. They all think you live, you know, very much east of London. I've lived in the country, they? Chris, now for 18 years, and if anybody literally shoved a million pound up my nose and said, move back to London, I wouldn't move back to London at any price. Well, funnily enough, we've got a million pounds here. Let's try it. <laughs> um, actually, what we do have here, thank you very much indeed for being with us, Mike, is the ceremonial through the keyhole That's key. That's marvellous. With, to say thank you for sharing I should your... treasure that, Master. God bless you, thank Governor. You, sir. And I'm glad you didn't get it, guys. So they didn't get Mike Green. Let's see what they do in part two. We'll be right back. It's time to save Britain's serious money, Super 7. Today's mission, incognito. Seven cities, seven people to save. Seven out of seven, and all before 7 a.m. Lynx Epic Fresh Body Wash. Smell and feel irresistibly fresh. Ooh. Residue builds up wash after wash. Look at all that dirt. Up to 500 grams a year can form. Use Calgon 4-in-1 in every wash to protect your machine from lime scale, rust, residue and odour buildup. Hey, let's play. The Donkey Sanctuary Weekly Lottery. Let's play to win the £5,000 Super Draw like Emma and Ray. Let's play for the £1,000 Weekly Jackpot that'll have you rolling in it. And let's play to make a donkey's day. Because every play makes every day better for donkeys. You'll help us love and care for donkeys all around the world. So play the Donkey Sanctuary Weekly Lottery for just one pound. Call the number on screen to play now. Win our £5,000 Super Draw. There are hundreds of cash prizes up for grabs. You could take home the £1,000 Weekly Jackpot. Like our latest winner, Asher. Hey, let's all play the Donkey Sanctuary Weekly Lottery. Call 0800 0382 515. Text DONKEY to 70366. Or search Donkey Lottery now. Every Cotswold Company sofa is handcrafted in the UK with a solid wood frame guaranteed for 15 years and flexible finance options including three years interest-free credit. Bring your home to life with the perfect sofa. The Cotswold Company. Discover our range in your nearest store or at cotswoldco.com. With clever hints that make growing your family tree easy and a friendly community to help, there's nowhere better to find your family history than find my past. The Hillary's Super Sale is now on. Get window wise with our best ever offers on products to help keep your home warm, including free thermal lining on our favorite curtains and Roman blinds. Plus, you can save up to 40% off hundreds of made to measure styles, all backed by our price promise. Get window wise today. Call 0800 916 1010 or visit hillarys.co.uk for your free home appointment so you can be snug as a bug for less this winter. Hillary's Super Sale for the window wise. Your neighborhood is bustling with flavor. And Deliveroo knows all the good spots. Uncover your new favorite restaurant. It's perfect. Or dive back into a bowl of the usual. Hello, old friend. 
Everything out there is right here. Deliveroo. It's all on your doorstep. The most iconic and famous painting in the world. And the screen has been stolen. That was the best criminal in Norway. Burglary, smash and grab thefts. I always love to play games. Theft of this nature is so extraordinary. This was myself I see in the painting. This was perfect. The painting is said to be priceless. You have to suck people into the trap. The whole world is looking for you. He was saying, you can't catch me. It's my story. Number 13. That's unlucky. Welcome back. Welcome back to Through the Keyhole with Lloyd Grossman, Britain's leading housing authority. Let's join him right now at house number two as we go through the keyhole. This is quite a modest hallway, so it probably belongs to someone who's rather shy and retiring, like this sporting bag lady. But the most interesting thing in this room is a very rare depiction of a Victorian guitar. In spite of all the jokey frogabilia, the totophile who lives in this house is actually quite a highbrow fellow, because this small library has some very serious books on 20th century British literature, and it shows a fascination with the 20s and 30s. This person is quite keen on gamesmanship as well. There's a splendid chess set. So I think this person is a very analytical person and probably quite a determined winner. Not all the literature in this house is highfalutin, even though some of the books here are frightfully intellectual. <laughs> Most of them are comics. Funny books, so someone here has a sense of humor, and there are certainly lots of laughs, especially when they look at this stove. There's also a tremendous nostalgia for old England, and a great love of railways. But this room really is the games room. It's a bit like the public bar in the frog and nightgown. There are stereo jukeboxes, including a wonderful 60s example. There's high-tech entertainment. And low-tech entertainment as well. Gamesmanship is the theme of this bedroom. There's evident fondness for cricket. There are famous cricketers behind me. And there are miniature souvenir cricket bats on the window sills. But sports doesn't stop at cricket here. There's also a love of football and even of golf. But the real passion in this person's life is tennis. There's a gigantic tennis racket, tennis wallpaper, tennis fabric for the curtains, and even little frogs holding tennis rackets. Or maybe they're statuettes of Boris Becker. <laughs> There's also a rather remarkable radio on the dresser, and I assume it's permanently tuned in to either Wimbledon or a test match. There's gamesmanship at the top of the house as well. Look at that profusion of board games. So one can only assume that someone living here is a very, very competitive person. But this room is really rock and roll heaven. And someone here is a true child of the 60s. He's also perhaps a frustrated pop star because there's a tremendous collection of guitars here. Or maybe he is indeed a rock superstar. At any rate, the sense of humor still comes through in this obsession. There are even some flying guitars on the wall. <laughs> Let's look at the evidence. The frogabilia, the heavy reading, the superannuated radio, and the collection of guitars. Who lives in a house like this? David, it's over to you. Well, thank you very much indeed, Lloyd. And now for our home and studio audience, here's Who's House.
Nigel, this time it's you to begin <laughs> the analysis. I've <clears> never <throat> seen anyone lay more clues designed to fool one. It's clearly someone who doesn't have any interest in music, someone who certainly doesn't play the guitar. Ah, I see there. That was a double bluff there. <laughs> I got the hissing from the audience. Someone who doesn't play the guitar. <laughs> Someone who um, <laughs> has got absolutely no interest in games. <laughs> I get the feeling that this is a, a very schizophrenic person. I would say probably it's a woman. Banana? It's a musician. Then it's not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one quick way to find out. Um, I don't know, it's the frogs that fl throw me most of all. Um, this person obviously balances sports and music as pastimes to something else that he or she or they do. And I don't know what the significance of the frogs is. I've seen that radio before. It's been photographed for one of the colour supplements. Um, I, I, can't, I can't get there. I think I'm looking at the house of somebody who played with a group which has never actually gone out of popularity. But, but that was my hunch, and I'm told that I'm wrong. I, I'm really quite... And what, what significance do you find in frogs? I don't know what to make of the frogs. I mean, well, nasty, slimy little French, things. Certainly. Except that if you kiss them, they turn into princes. <laughs> no, no, he's, he's no. not... It's not prince. <laughs> no. Uh, no, the, no, uh, I didn't think it was. <laughs> Chris. Oh, you throw me now. You said he's not French, and I was thinking of those little funny frogs. It was probably Charles Aznavour. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's not a musician, because it's full of gold discs on the wall. There's a lot of guitars, a lot of gold discs. Record which... producer. Someone in the music industry. He doesn't actually play music, uh, music instruments himself. <laughs> right. Uh, also, it was someone they all recognised. They went, oh, when his face came up. Yes. So how did they go again? They all went, whoa. <laughs> is, that, is that how you went? I didn't yes. see you go. <laughs> yes, rather odd of them, I thought. Uh, but what funny faces they've got. Oh. Um, so it's a well-known, some organiser, leader, producer, or whatever, of musicians. It's a well-known record producer. Executive, not... music industry executive. Uh, you've got the music business, it's not a record producer. Band leader of some sort. Or. Obviously, got the gold disc for doing something well lots of times and selling lots of records, basically. Look within your own soul, Christopher. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a disc jockey, is he? Uh, <laughs> don't say. Not. Don't Jonathan. say I don't try and help you, sir. But I can't imagine the sort of disc jockey you get on a programme like this. Um, well, who could it...? Oh, well, now we're Alan way Freeman. off on a long track. No, yeah. it's not Alan Freeman. I was right there. Oh, well, he's on Radio 1, then. It's a Radio 1 disc jockey. Yeah. So he hasn't got a watch, because they're constantly doing time checks. Um, <laughs> it's a Radio 1 disc jockey who's got books with long words in. That's... <laughs> <laughs> And it's getting more difficult. Joined up writing, yes. Powell? Think back to earlier in the show. Yes. Not really, not Mike. Not Mike. It's a Mike Reed night. It's, it's not Mike, Mike Reed, Reed night. Yes. <laughs> Mike Reed. Will you come through the keyhole? Well, they got there in the end, but I had to get Chris Town to look within his soul yeah. before. It was a great struggle. It was. He <laughs> found his soul in the end, though. But the... Uh, what's the frogs? What's the significance of the frogs? Oh, they're totally irrelevant. You seemed very obsessed by the frogs. Lloyd and they were, was obsessed yes. with the frogs, yeah. They they're were not an important irrelevant. part of your life, the frogs? Not, no, they just accumulate. They just they breed faster than rabbits in my house. Do they? I have wooden ones, bronze ones, plastic ones. Do you like frogs? Yes. Yeah, enough, yes. Enough. Not Where yet. do you find them? All over the place, mainly in the garden. Um, <laughs> no, I, <clears throat> I don't know why. I just, I, I like the shape of them. They're, they're fairly mysterious things. Uh, nobody knows too much about frogs. Mm. They are fairly mysterious things. I mean, you can't sort of grab hold of one and pat it. No, so even a, even Anna couldn't work out the significance of frogs, <clears throat> really, could you? No, except I thought it was somebody who wanted to be kissed and turned into a prince. Yes. Well, you're right. Oh. I, can, can I hold to that view? Yes. Or as Nigel said so emphatically, it's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Was I wrong? Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's you, you growing wine, I read in one piece, in that 
very nice house or outside it? No, I don't. I found a wine with the, with the, with the same name oh, the same as name? my house. So I bought some. People don't ask questions. They go, oh, it's jolly good. And I go, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, our team were taking it in exactly the same. Do you call yourself a child of the 60s, a frustrated rock star, as Lloyd said? Would certainly, you like to have been? Certainly not frustrated, um, because I, I do, with, with my John Betjeman uh, album and what have you, I, mean, I do write a lot. Um, I'm in a studio a lot. I go out and play live as well. So I do as much as I want to. I'd hate to be a rock artist touring the world night after night playing the same stuff. Um, so the answer is, A, I'm not frustrated, but I do enjoy writing and playing a lot. So you like that part. Where did it all begin? In Manchester, did it originally? Manchester, Mickey? Um, well, it, it began, my radio career began in Reading, on local radio. Um, I wasn't taken on to be a DJ. I was taken on to open the bowling for, uh, for their cricket team. They said, will you open the bowling for us? <laughs> and I said, yes, OK. And they said, we'd actually better give you a programme, uh, just to make it all above board. So like I an American athletic scholarship. It was or whatever, a bit yeah. like that. Yes, if you do, it's like, it's like at school, if you do well at sport, you know, you're okay. You, academically, you can then get away with it. Mm. Now, what about this John Betjeman project? We had a single out earlier this year, which has been a hit in, over here and Australia and Holland. And we have uh, with David Essex, uh, Mavanwi, which is a poem that Betjeman wrote about Mavanwi Piper, the wife of the artist John Piper. And uh, the new single is out uh, coincidentally at the moment. Um, with David Grant and the Gospel Choir on one side and the Eton College Choir on the other side. And among your many awards, uh, Chris has mentioned gold albums and things, but among your many awards was Wally of the Year in 1984 from Melody Maker. What was that for? I don't know. I don't read the Melody Maker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I stopped reading it when it ceased to be a good paper. Um, heaven knows, it could have been for almost anything. I wondered really? it was just an intriguing honour to have had in your life. It's, I know, oh, wait a minute, I know what it was for. I probably know what it was for. It was probably for not playing the Frankie Goes to Hollywood single, Relax, which, um, uh, oh, yeah, at, that's at the right. time, that's I right. looked at the back of the 12-inch of the record and saw some lyrics which were highly distasteful, and a picture that I thought went with the lyrics, and I thought, well, I can't play this personally. And it was like, like the domino syndrome, from me just personally not playing it. It just went... You know, World Service, mm. BBC, Top of the Pops, everything went with it. And I got lover with the blame. I think it was the relax incident. I think you're right, absolutely right. But the, but the gold disc, certainly, as Chris will testify, you get those for nothing and you're embarrassed because they're on your wall. Why have you got these? <laughs> no, I don't know, really. Well, I know the camera never went in close enough to read the titles of any of your classic hits, did it? Like, no, oh, no, quite. Oh, what's that one? Yeah, <laughs> little giveaways. Well, we thank you ever so much uh, for sharing your home with us. We'd like to present you with thank the you. memorial key. Signifying Marvelous. that this great event has occurred. And we'd like to thank you for being with us. We'd like to thank Chris Tarrant for being with us. <laughs> we'd like to thank Anna Rayburn for being with us. And we'd like to thank Nigel Dempster for being with us. And, of course, we'd like to thank this Mike Reed for being with us, and we'd like to thank that Mike Reed for being with us. This has been your Mike Reed special from through the keel. Goodbye for now. The top answer. Mecha Bingo Online. Sponsors of Challenge. Sky Cinema invites you back to Hogwarts. I'm Ron, by the way. I'm Harry. Harry Potter. 